Big 90. Our podcast is all about soccer, all things soccer. Soccer has arrived in town. We are ready to fight. They're classy too, man. I can wear this on a date. <laughs> People who are most successful are the ones who don't just give up. We have officially partnered up with Albemarle Paper Supply. Albemarle Paper Supply is a paper distributor specializing in high quality paper products. Albemarle Paper Supply services paper products within the cities of Charlotte, Concord, Greensboro, Winston-Salem, Salisbury, Morrisville, and smaller cities in between. From fiber, plastic, and foam bowls, paper towels, tissues, napkins, takeout containers, gloves, to janitorial supplies, and much, much more, Albemarle Paper is dedicated to bring you the paper goods you need. Customers can pick up products directly at Albemarle Paper's warehouse located at 735 Henson Street in Albemarle, North Carolina, where products can be delivered to you at your business doorstep. Go to work. You love and you love to go there. That means that something is being done right. That there's a great environment. You love to go there. You enjoy your time there. I will. I don't want to say this has not been the case, but for most parts, it was not the easiest. It was. Uh, it was a place within the locker room, within the players, where it was great, but there was was certain fractures between us and the coaching staff. Uh, I think it's normal that you agree on certain things, you disagree on certain things. We always try to help um, bring the club forward because in my eyes, it needs to be a giving and taking from both parties because we all care about how we perform on the field. Doesn't matter who, who has what ideas, at the end, we have to come together to perform, give our best for the, on the field to be successful. I think this was not always the case that players have been heard. Um, interesting enough, I I couldn't train today. My ankle is still bothering me, um, so I'm still trying to to come back onto the pitch. But I I had the time to look at faces. I had the time to look at the players, at the non-verbal communication and. It was very interesting to see how, I would say, with how much relief players were approaching the training, with how, with a lot of smiles. Um, but then also, when it was time to train, how players and you guys have not been there anymore when we when we did tournaments, with how much intensity they were training, and um, that was great to see. They had a go at each other. Because today the preparation started and uh, we, we want to make sure that we are very, very competitive against Red Bull. Because we, on the road, well, obviously we didn't, we didn't get the result we wanted, but now it's in the Bank of America Stadium and uh, I hope we are ready by the weekend. I don't think it's fair to... Uh, speak down on somebody that cannot defend himself. I mean, you get the sense, you get the understanding. Going into details is, is not fair. Very interesting one. A very interesting one. Um, it was not easy, really not easy. Um, I, I really was, I met with him end of last year when I played for independence and he presented his philosophy to me and, um, I thought, oh, that will be interesting to see how we can do these things in, in a, in a positive way. Um, but like I said before, it's always a listening feedback for everybody, for everybody involved. And the issue was when you try to address a problem or can be football related, can be non-football related. Most of the times, unfortunately, um, the door was shut and that didn't feel good. Um, I tried hard to, to, to be a, a communicator between him and the team, but certain times it just felt too much and um, it was discouraging. So. 
it, again, it was an interesting one. I, I really tried to to push it forward um, because we believe that okay, if we get this philosophy right, if you get all the players to buy in, it could be something good. But within the philosophy, unfortunately, we had too many changes from game to game. Again, I don't want to go into too many details, but it didn't really reflect what we were told at the beginning of the season, how we would approach the season. needs is confidence. Confidence, especially away from home. Um, we have our fans in the Bank of America Stadium, which makes us move mountains. Uh, so we are, we are very confident there. But for us to be a, a, a player contender, you need to get those points away from home. And again, I'm referring back to Christian Ladancio. He has been working in the background a lot individually with players, trying to help them um, better their, their game with video analysis on the field, then work with McKenzie, for example, uh, who, who showed tremendous improvement. Uh, Brent Bronico, I mean, I think he spent hours at Christian Latanzio just on the screen, uh, adjusting his positioning and his understanding of the game. So if we can get it right, and again, we have a new coach, yes. The benefit that we have is that this coach was with us now and knows us very well, each individual player, for, for a couple of months now. But things will change the way we want to play. So those changes might not be effective right away. But again, what I've seen today is with the desire that the players trained, with how they had to go with each other, how emotionally it was out there, emotion in a good way, uh, how competitive it was out there. I think there's something really good happening right now. And uh, I'm honestly, I, I might not, might or might not be able to play on the weekend, but whoever is going to be out there is going to kick some ass. Hey, Christian. So you oh, in 90. Here we go. <laughs> good to see you. Good to see you. Um, and you mentioned a lot about feeling like the team has underperformed. Would you say that the team is was performing in spite of Miguel being the coach or was he actually improving anything? So that's a good question. For me, the team performed because first of all, we have great characters, players that wear a good head on their shoulders. Plus, um, um, Oh, I'm missing the word now. Sorry, guys. <laughs> uh, plus, you had this. Um... Ah, you need to help me, I... guys. Well, you can help. You, you can help me out, out with that. Uh, when something new, it's, it was just the whole excitement of being a part of a new franchise, right? I think this goes a long way. The problem is then when this wears off. Where does the team stand? Who are then the real characters to show and perform, no matter if it's good, bad, or, or raining, or, or the sun is shining? And I see everybody, everybody on that field working their behinds off. Mm. If it works out or not, it's a different story. But I, will, I cannot point at anybody to say, you did not want to play today. You did not want to perform today or give your best today. So the basis is there. And again, it's coming back to good players with a good head on their shoulders. So your sense is that like there's an overall like pressure lifted off the players is what you're saying? That's what you're saying. <laughs> well, I'm asking. <laughs> um, Would you, so you talked about the cultural fractures between players and the coaching staff would you say that's most of the players half of the players a third of the players what's your sense culturals um I, I just for me personally i was used to a different approach that doesn't mean the approach is the right one okay everybody has their own style but i think it's so important especially with a young group that we have it doesn't matter if you win or lose, but to address the players, to use a, a loss in your benefit to have a 
post-match analysis to look at what did we do well, what did we do not so well. That's how you improve a team. That's how you improve a team, even if it's not as young as ours. That's just the process. And that was a well, that was not existing. Okay. The intensity. Um, I think that was that was mentioned previous in articles that, that I read that uh, we lacked intensity in training. We did a lot of tactical work, but in this league, the way I experiencing now as well, I also didn't know. You need to be fit. You need to be able to run. 1995, 100 minutes on the scorching temperatures out there on turf, which is an extra a bonus for every player. So you really need to run, be able to run. And I think fitness wise, I, I think we're at a good stage now, getting the fitness through the games, through the weeks. But I think this, that the, the training structure, the training build through the season leading up to the games missed intensity you see again i'm coming back to what i said before players having a go today on a tuesday at each other because they want to win this desire of of okay it's a 5v5 tournament but hey i want to win this i want it's for the pride and maybe it helps us then also moving forward to be able to start the game stronger because again, <laughs> there's a there's a quote from brendan rogers he said Great teams start the game strong and finish them strong. And that's down to fitness. That's down to desire. And um, unfortunately, we had a couple of games where we considered early that, which might also be a reason due to the training build that we had uh, so far. So the rumors are, can be right or wrong. In that case, they are wrong. Um, uh, I, I mean, I spoke to lot of players throughout the weeks and they they all love to be here it's a really honestly it's a really good group of players that like to be together like to work hard together and that like to be successful together <laughs>